gun at the officers. Yeah, so if you look at that still image, um, even though you don't see all of the officers, the involved officer was just outside the frame in the direction that that barrel is emerging from the blanket. But it looked to me as if that, that gun uh, in Mr. Lott's hand was pointed toward the floor. And certainly when the county attorney's office reviews that case, they will be carefully examining all of those factors. Uh, and I am I'm absolutely positive they will take a look at that. Um, of course, we all know these events happen very rapidly. And as there's a gun emerging in your direction, you're forced to make a split second decision um, about when it's, when it's a threat. Well, Chief, Chief, Chief Huffman, Huffman, no, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Chief Huffman, no, no, do not. Okay, I'm not a threat, I don't have a gun. Okay, don't treat me like I'm a threat. This is what I would call the anatomy of a cover up. This is unacceptable, I'm sorry, it is. When I agreed to work with you on the work group, we talked about the importance of transparency and accountability. And here, what we are seeing is business as usual. And you know this, Amelia. You know this, Jacob. I don't know how you guys slept that night. I couldn't sleep that night. Tears from a mother's perspective, thinking about what happened. I saw the picture of Amir, he looks like a boy. My son is 17 years old. He has slept on his friend's couches for sleepovers. So we cannot sit here and whitewash this and pretend that it's okay. You knew that I was not gonna stand for police violence and a push for accountability, yet you asked me to be a part of the work group and I knew what I thought I was signed up for. This isn't what I signed up for. I understand if you're not comfortable having me continue to co-chair, that's your prerogative. I signed up to help bring recommendations because we're tired of being killed, we're tired of the cover-ups, we're tired of the excuses. And to hide behind the St. Paul Police Department, the deadliest police force in the state of Minnesota is unacceptable. You all had no business agreeing to carry out a, a warrant and now you're claiming that's part of their investigation. You don't know. Well, why the hell did you all sign up to do this in the first place? Right. There was a homicide that happened at one something in the morning on Hennepin Avenue. Someone was killed and then the person drove away in a black SUV. They're still at large in Minneapolis, potentially a threat to residents. But you all go do something for St. Paul police and now you're trying to hide behind that decision. It's not acceptable. We are ready for change. When the people voted to reelect you, Jacob, they not only showed that they wanted to see a new leader, right? Not saying you're not the person who got reelected, you got reelected, but what they were expecting is a new beginning. That's why they gave you more power and authority. So that is what we want to see as the residents of Minneapolis. We don't want to see cover-ups. We don't want to see whitewashing. Yeah. People are asking very simple questions that have still not been answered. Amelia, you're saying you want to be the chief? Then act like it. Demonstrate integrity. Don't cover up for what those cops did. If they knew that the kid had a gun as he started waking up, say, drop your weapon. They didn't do that. No One cop opened fire and took the life of a child who was trying to go back into his blanket. Any mom can see what happened there. So I can't tolerate the whitewashing. I'm sorry, y'all. We can't do this. I know you have your narrative. I know you have your script. And no, you guys didn't personally go shoot somebody. But you do have the opportunity to make it right, to talk about the fact that you changed the no-knock warrant policy. Where's the evidence of that that wasn't present on what happened to Amir Locke? So if I'm going to be the co-chair of this group, I'm expecting strong leadership. I'm expecting integrity, and I'm expecting accountability. Yes. You guys aren't going to waste my goddamn time. And I don't care if you guys had your security trying to stop me. You, I can be used to come speak the truth about what needs to happen, but when it's time to call out these inconsistencies, these inaccuracies, the lack of information, I got to sit in the back and, or even not even be invited. I'm not here for it. We fought too long, too hard. There's people in jail, including Cortez Rice trying to get the court to show what's happening in the courtroom so people can see what's going on. People have put their lives on the line because we're ready for change. So we're expecting from this point forward for you guys to do something different. I'm not playing. We're not here for it. We're not here for it. I'm only committed to working on this work group. 
if you all are committed to being honest and transparent and not covering up the bullshit. Thank you. Why did you, why did you release pictures of his gun, but no pictures of the gun of the officer who killed him? Why have you not released that information? You know, you, this man did not shoot anyone. He did not discharge his weapon. Why did you release his gun? That was a, that was a disgusting gun, vilification of this man. That is inexcusable. It is utterly disgusting that you would release a picture of his gun, even though he never fired his weapon. And you know he didn't fire his weapon, because you have both seen the video. This is the kind of lack of transparency that Fatima is exactly talking about. When you send out the sensationalistic video uh, picture of his gun, a man who has never committed a crime, but you don't release the video, or rather the picture of the officer's gun. So, Ms. Ms. Gross, thank you for being here, and Ms. Levy Armstrong, Thank you for your strong words. Uh, you acknowledged and rightfully pointed out that at this moment in time, we need accountability, we need leadership, and we need transparency. You asked whether we wanted you to continue as co-chair. The answer is yes. We are dead serious about seeing the necessary changes through, and the necessary changes start with being honest and transparent. That begins with all of you here today and releasing body camera footage in the immediacy so that people can see exactly what is in it, good, bad, or ugly. But it doesn't stop there. It goes on to getting the necessary facts of the case, and I know, speaking from experience, that there is an ongoing tension between getting things out quickly and getting things right. We want to get things right. We want to, excuse me, excuse me. We want to gather the necessary evidence to make sure that we are not telling you something that is inaccurate now, only to correct it a day later. Why was Amir Locke referred to as a suspect? And so I'm going to ask. Why was Amir Locke referred to as a suspect in the MPD's press release? That's right. I don't know. So, and again, why was his gun pictures released? So if we could do one question at a time. Um, I, I, we do want to answer the questions, but I would also prefer just to, to one question at a time. The, to, your, to your question, I, I do not know. Does the chief know? Can the chief answer that question? Go ahead. So yesterday at the time that we were putting out the press release, we didn't have as much information as we have now, of course. And so it's unclear, certainly unclear yesterday, but it, it remains unclear if or how Mr. Locke is connected to St. Paul's investigation, and more information will be coming as St. Paul digs so further into the case. why did you refer to him as a suspect in a press know. release if you didn't know? If you That's didn't know. That's all the time we have, everyone. Let's call it. No, no. 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 Was no. anyone apprehended no. as part of this? Um, also, when will you release you the search warrant? I was Shame. walking out of a press conference transparency. You are a murderer. You owe us answers. This is a shame. This is, this is what we have been fighting against. This is what we've been fighting against since George Floyd was killed. Running away from accountability and transparency. This is shame. Residents of people in Minneapolis need to know this cannot continue. They killed a young man who was sleeping. He did not even have a chance. And for a lot of the media already shared the one where he had the gun holding it. You know if you are anybody who's a gun owner that if your finger is out, you are preparing, but you are not ready to fire because you don't even know who's in front of you. That's right. This young man did not have a chance. This was Brianna Taylor in Minneapolis, and even worse. And the mayor and the chief are running away from questions. I have to say it. I have to say it. Oh, God. I have to say it. You saw what happened just now when I asked about why. Why they released those pictures of his gun, though they never made an allegation that he fired it. And you can clearly see in the video that it was never fired. In fact, he never even pointed it at an officer. But yet, they will not answer why the question of why they released that sensationalistic, demonizing picture. But yet, they did not release anything about the officer except his name until finally now, and they certainly did not release a picture of his gun. Wouldn't that be more relevant to news media? That was a gun that was fired. Why would they release a picture of this man's gun? What was the sole purpose of that? 
Well, we know what it was. It was sensationalistic demonization of a victim of police murder, plain and simple. And I'm disgusted by it. I'm disgusted by the fact that these elected officials and appointed officials cannot actually answer a simple question. They said, we'll do one question at a time. I think I asked my question three times. Why did you release that, the pictures of that gun? What was the purpose of releasing those pictures? And yet they ran away, time's up, ran away without ever answering that question. There was not one legitimate reason for releasing that picture. It was about associating a man with a gun to try to create a narrative to justify what the police did. That is what happened here tonight. That's what happened when they released that yesterday. It is reprehensible, it is disgusting. We are not tolerating it as a community any longer. And that's why we had to be here tonight. Thank you.